Hey guys, oh man, off again. All right, hey, listen, this is Michael. This is Resolve Life Training. You can probably see I just I just finished another run. I'm sitting in the shade. I'm gonna drink a bottle of fluid. It's about four, four and a quarter, 4.25 miles, last run of the week. So let me tell you how this week worked out. It ended up being about 19, 19 and a quarter miles of running and 60 miles of biking. Both those numbers absolutely satisfy, if not surpass the numbers I need to achieve every week to finish off the 5,000 miles biking and finish off the 500 miles of running in 2019. So, I had a thought, as I often do when I'm out running, something came to me. And it's regarding an article I read, a, well, I wanna say a few weeks back, but it might've been a few months back. It could've been two or three months ago. At, at any rate, what the article basically said was this. The article said, if you were to take away all of the wealth from the 10 richest people on earth, and you were to redistribute that wealth amongst the remainder of the planet, everybody got a chunk, making these 10 people who were the 10 richest people on earth, now, by virtue of losing everything, the 10 poorest people on earth. If you were to do that, according to this study, within 10 years, those 10 people would have reacquired the vast majority of that wealth. I, so I'm running around the lake, I'm thinking about how, how could that be because now they're, they're not only poor, they're the 10 poorest people on earth by virtue of losing everything and having it redistributed. Even if you only raised your net worth to $200 by getting your portion of their money, they still have less than 200. They are the poorest people on earth now. How are they going to reacquire most if not all of that wealth within 10 years? And I. I Th this is what I came to. But what I'm talking about is who they are. They're now the poorest people on earth. What you have to focus in on is what they are. See, everybody tends to focus on who they are now. Jack Ma, Alibaba, $55, million, $55 billion. What they don't think about is Jack Ma, when he was in China, was one of 25 people who applied for 24 positions at Kentucky Fried Chicken, he was the one that didn't get hired. Bill Gates is the son of a craftsman, a woodworker, okay? So we, we all like to focus on who they are now. We don't pay attention to their backstory, which is what they are. We know who they are. What they are, I believe, can be broken down into just a few things. Number one, they have enormous dreams, goals aspirations, aims, whatever you want to call it, they're enormous. Number two, they have an amazing clarity of thought when referencing these dreams. It doesn't seem like a dream to them. It seems real. They don't just dream about a big house with five bathrooms. If you ask them about it, they'll tell you that they want glass bricks, French doors, etched mirrors. They have amazing clarity of thought when they're referencing their dreams, number two. Number three, they're willing to work 100 hours a week to get it. And number four, they will not quit. So even though you take all of their wealth and redistribute it to all of us, we're not them. Imagine your typical lottery winner <clears throat> who wins $100 million at 40. By 45, he's declaring bankruptcy. He's broke. Why? Because he doesn't have enormous vision. He doesn't have amazing clarity of thought when he's referencing these goals. He's not willing to work 80 hours a week, and he is willing to quit. Hell, he's willing to quit at the first sign of problems. He's willing to quit if somebody starts discussing problems. That's how these 10 people are going to reacquire all of their wealth. It's not because of who they are. Who they are is the 10 poorest people on earth. It's because of what they are. And what they are are people with vision, clarity, an amazing work ethic, and they never say die, okay? that's how they're going to get the money back. And that is how I'm going to get to my goals. That's how you're going to get to your goals. It's no different. All we have to do is apply their rules to our life. Okay. And how hard you work it, how committed you are, how big your goals are, how big your dreams are, that that's going to determine how far you go with it. I, I know what I want. So I just wanted to put that out there to you. You know, everybody thinks about who people are now, you got to pay a little bit more attention to what they are. What is 
What are their standards? When you're looking at somebody, what are their standards? What is their creed? What rules do they live by? Do they set high standards for themselves? Do they believe in honesty, integrity, helping others? Start paying a little bit closer attention to what they are. Are they willing to work? Are they willing to keep going? Are they, will they never say quit? That's what came to me when I was running. Yeah, I think a lot of us focus on who we are, who other people are, who, what, what they look like on Instagram or Snapface or whatever it is. That, that doesn't give you a good idea of what they are, okay? We need to start paying attention to what you are. And if you need to establish a creed, a set of rules to live by, a set of standards for yourself, I don't think that would be a bad place to start. Have big dreams, have clarity when you're referencing those dreams, be willing to work and never say die. You know, I thought I'd put that out. It just, it came to me as things often do when I'm running. You know, the deeper, the deeper you get into that pain cave, the closer you put yourself to discomfort, the, uh, the greater your ability to deal with it is going to become. Okay, when I get, the closer I get to discomfort, the more clarity of thought I get. And that's taken years of training myself, purposely placing myself in positions of discomfort. I'm comfortable there now. That's, that's when my mind opens up and I start looking at things differently. I start lo stop looking at the who, I start looking at the what, okay? I start examining the why. And the closer I get to pain, the more clear I am on these things. And for, for, you, <laughs> for you, I'd recommend meditation, okay? <laughs> it's not pleasant to come out here and kill yourself just so you can find five, seven, eight, ten minutes of the brief moment of clarity. Try meditation. Anyway, that's it. I'm Michael. This is Resolve Life Training. I hope you got something out of it. Stay tuned.